Now we love it when we come together with partners to accelerate customer success. And Gen AI is providing all new opportunities to do just that. But the nascency and the rapid pace of innovation of generative AI means that our customers need you now more than ever. At the core, customers need help ensuring that they get their data and security foundations right. AWS and our partners are building and delivering an incredibly comprehensive suite of foundation models, applications, developer tools to support a wide range of business needs. And those business needs can be mission critical. And they certainly were for one customer who's responsible for an aging fleet of more than 5,000 aircraft, many of which have no designated replacements and are likely to be flying continuously for the next 10 to 20 years. Now, this customer was facing costs in excess of $28,000 per hour. They needed to make the seemingly impossible possible, reduce costs, improve efficiencies, and predict the fleet's performance. And they did it all using generative AI. Let's hear from the team that approached this challenge and led the way. Please welcome Jay Bonsi, the Chief Technology Officer from the US Air Force, Tom Siebel, CEO of C3AI, and Jeff Kratz, Vice President, Worldwide Public Sector Channels and Alliances at AWS. Jay, Tom, welcome. Thanks for taking the time to, to join us here at reInvent. Tom, I'll start first with you. You know, you've had a number of wonderful announcements recently, exciting new developments here with AWS. Can you share a little bit about those announcements and the importance for customers like the US Air Force? Well, we're very pleased to announce today the availability of C3 generative AI on the AWS marketplace. It's available today. For those who are interested, you can just click on this uh, uh, QR code and get access to the product. It is a no-code uh, environment where you will instantly have a fully functional generative AI application up and running. So it's really, uh, it, it, it's quite a significant development. It's available now. And for those of you who are interested, I encourage you to click on the link and go for it. And Jay, you've been working with C3AI as well as other vendors. You know, it's critical for the United States Air Force that it continues to be ready. What type of challenges are you facing now, and how are you thinking about technology addressing those? So the main challenge of the Air Force is to provide uh, technological superiority over uh, the adversaries and competitors of the United States. And alongside our um, coalition partners, we, uh, we operate in an incredibly uh, diverse and complex environment. We have an enormous fleet uh, of aircraft. That's our main sort of line of business. And we ask uh, a lot of our service members to be able to operate anywhere in the globe. This means having technology that acts at the scale that we need to operate, but also in uh, innumerably difficult conditions and that needs to be ruggedizable, field repairable, and understandable by uh, new service members who've just come in to the service. And so it's, uh, we have this incredibly, incredibly uh, dense challenge between uh, very new aircraft and very old aircraft. And it's incumbent for us to have things like AI to be able to uh, help us just bring additional leverage to those efforts. And those are some pretty big challenges. Tom, how are you working with the US Air Force to address those challenges of an uh, aging aircraft making sure they're ready, but also positioned in the right places. We've been working with our partners at AWS and the United States Air Force since 2018 uh, on this project uh, that is called Panda, operated by the Rapid Sustainment Office. So the rough numbers, there are 5,000 aircraft in the United States Air Force, average airframe is 30 years old, and on any given day, 50% of these aircraft will deploy. And so the project that we began in 2008 and is now in full production, Okay, we have aggregated all of the data, all of the, the telemetry, for example, a B-1 bomber has 42,000 sensors. The maintenance systems, the flight sortie systems, the inventory systems, the weather at the time that it happened from the entire fleet uh, now for decades. This is 100 uh, terabytes of structured and unstructured data, and then we've built 
hundreds and hundreds of machine learning models that will identify system and subsystem failures, say flap actuators or igniters or auxiliary power units. It'll identify failure 50 to 100 flight hours before the system fails so that we can then repair the, the, <clears throat> the aircraft and a scheduled maintenance when it stops in Munich or Bahrain, avoid the unscheduled downtime. And the result is we're able to increase the availability of aircraft on any given day at the United States Air Force by 25%. So this is, you know, at the scale of the United States Air Force, that's a lot of lethality that's in the air instead of in the hangar. And such critical importance. You know, Jay, when you think about the partnership that you have with C3AI and AWS, how do you think about partnership and how did it get started? What do you look for in those relationships? So as Tom alluded to, the key challenge um, of our partnership is scale, right? And so we have 800,000 sort of enterprise users uh, or employees, as you can think of them. Uh, we operate in 180 locations across the globe, and we have a, a budget in the billions. And that would place us somewhere squarely within the Fortune 10. And so we need partners, um, uh, technology partners like uh, C3AI and cloud service providers like AWS to, who can uh, come along and, and scale with us and go to uh, the austere locations that we need to operate in. This is in incredibly important. We also have to operate in a way that is fiscally responsible, uh, secure, and it plays within the rules um, that the United States has set out for, for doing business with the government. And so what we ask of those partners is really to find the, uh, find the mission thread and come along uh, with us on that journey and to help us bring technology to the fight uh, no matter uh, where it is. We think of these these uh, technology companies and these uh, key cloud service providers as really as national strategic assets that, that are there and ready when we need to be there and ready. Well, thank you so much for both of you sharing your thoughts and insights with us today. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.